Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Facebook Live um, homeschool holidays. Or ho I'm sorry, homeschool holiday season without the mess and grumbles. I have Christy Clover and Trisha Goyer here with me. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about these two ladies. I am so excited to have these iconic homeschool moms on with me. Iconic. All right. I, I love it. Moms. I'll take it. <laughs> Trisha is a homeschool mom of 10. She's also an award-winning author of over 70 books. Her most recent book is The Grumble Free Year. She is currently homeschooling in Arkansas, Little Rock to be exact, and you can find her at trishagoyer.com. Christy Clover is a homeschool mom of five. She is homeschooling in San sunny San Diego, <laughs> and um, she is the author of Mom, Master of Mayhem. You can find her over at christyclover.com, where you can also pick up the book. Today, we are going to talk about homeschooling through the holidays. It is really uh, a stressful time of year and it's also a very joyous time of year so we're going mm -hmm. to really concentrate on those two things if you have any comments for us or anything that you'd like us to address please leave it in the comments and we'll try to get to it first let's talk to Trisha Trisha tell us a little bit about your homeschool your family and um, a little bit about more about you well I have 10 kids my oldest is 30 and our youngest is nine so I have four homeschool graduates and then six that I'm still homeschooling. So from nine all the way to 16 are the ones that I'm still homeschooling. So um, we do sunlight. So we do have two different curriculums that are two different sets that I use, the younger kids and the older kids. So we're reading aloud together. We love it. Um, right now, our oldest daughter is here from the Czech Republic with her baby visiting. So you might hear like a baby crying in the other room or something. Oh. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's so fun. We live in Arkansas. Um, I'm married to John and I kind of write books on the side. So that's our life. Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> All right, perfect. Christy, tell us a little bit about you. Oh, well, I'm here in San Diego. And Steve and I've been married for 22 years. We have five kids. So, I mean, Right here, you know, we're an under underachievers. We only have half the amount that Trisha has. But we are currently homeschooling all five officially. We're we're actually in the process of trying to decide if this is going to be stay Grant's junior year of high school or make it his senior year, which you can do when you homeschool. Mm -hmm. um, but this is our first year officially using all of a Sunlight curriculum, so we're really excited. We have two different curriculum that we're doing right now, and so we've got everything from like junior, senior in high school, I was sophomore in high school, and then I've got a fourth grader, a second grader, and a kindergartner. Very good. So we're having fun over here. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So let's talk about how you handle homeschooling through the holidays. For example, do you take long breaks without any studies, or do you incorporate some of the learning into the Christmas season? Um, so how about Christy? You know, it really varies from year to year. I have to say that it kind of depends on what we have going on. Did we already take big breaks by this point in the year? So sometimes if like skiing conditions are great, we'll go drive up to Big Bear and, you know, go skiing. So that's the great thing about homeschooling is you have that flexibility, but we also can bring all of our books with us. And so we do tend to start pulling in a lot of literature for um, our homeschool year. In fact, you'll love this because I have an entire bin full of books that gets put away for Christmas. And I have some Thanksgiving time as well. And that comes out. So it's like these new fresh books. And so we're, I'm always trying to collect really great books for the kids to be reading. It becomes part of our decoration around the house. Um, but we have had some Decembers when we'll take you know, a big chunk of time off. Um, so it, that, I guess homeschooling through the holidays, we incorporate traditions a lot, um, but I have high schoolers now, so we, we get a little bit more real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they kind of have to finish the work that we have outlined, but I do try to lighten it for the younger kids and kind of keep it fun. Yeah, a little bit more intense in the curriculum you're doing. I know. <laughs> a little older. 
Well, yeah. Very good. Trisha, how about you? What do you guys do during the holidays? Yeah, I'm like Chrissy. Well, we love flexibility. So like my daughter mm -hmm. is here for Thanksgiving. So she's going to be here for three weeks. So today, like she just got mm -hmm. in at midnight. So this morning we've just been playing with the baby. So, you know, we weren't doing any read alouds or that. Sort right. Of um, but like last weekend, I had, to, I had to do some media stuff to promote my new book in Nashville. So we listened to some of the books actually on tape or on they're not on tape anymore on yeah. Audible, but some of our school books. So on the way there, we listened to Sarah Plain and Tall, which is one of our read out loud. And so it's neat. Even if we're when traveling, we try to mm -hmm. listen to books on tapes because then you're getting the schoolwork. And I'm like, hey, that was like three works three worth of reading that was done on a drive over to Nashville. And then like when we we're over there, we went to the science museum. So stuff that we've been learning about in school in our school books, we're at the museum. And then like tomorrow we're driving up to Branson. We'll probably put on another book, a, a tape. We're going to um, the Christ um, Sight and Sound Theater event. So we try to do these fun things around the holidays, but we're also being creative, whether it's book on tape or, um, you know, doing read out louds, even when my daughter's here, so she's 27, she'll probably do some, some of our read out louds. It just makes it more special. We'll get Coco out, she'll get some of the books yes. out. We'll read them. I'll play with the baby while she reads out loud to the kids. Um, but then, you know, there is like the older kids are in algebra and those sorts of things. So we try to do a right. little bit of that, but we definitely will mix it around because while she's here, it'll be kind of more flexible. And then probably, you know, after Christmas, when people are taking the break, we'll probably start digging back in. But we also started early. So we started um, the, the, first, no, the second week in August. And so I knew because the holidays, Kind of get busy and we get um family coming in that we started early so we would have this time to do some of the fun stuff while we still got a lot of the curriculum done earlier in the year yeah i mean that's one of the beauties of flexibility right you can start you can go all year long you can homeschool through the holidays you don't have to mm -hmm. you could skip spring break you could go a month longer um yep. it really is a flexible thing so that's great Right. And I feel like I need to state the obvious. I feel like we're the Brady Bunch here. I feel like she has. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Nobody's above. Like, like, incorporated a little dance or something. That's right. I love it. I love it. Here. Okay, cool. I'm No. <laughs> Actually, I will say when we studied ancient Egypt, I pulled out. And it, you know, like that back in the days when we first started, I don't remember how I found it. I think I just found it on the internet that the walk like an Egyptian. Oh, I was yeah. playing the bangles the whole time, and I'm like teaching the kids how to do like the King Tut thing. And oh, it, was so it was very good. It was very good. That's fun. I used to love that song, like legit. It was my favorite song in the world. Right? Yeah. I played it all the time. Just like that old folks. Oh. <laughs> And I'm like, how did I ever find that? It was before. I'm like, no, it wasn't before the internet. But yeah. It is weird. Like, I we remember life before the internet. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about tips. Let's say you're talking to a brand new homeschool mom and you want to provide her your top two or three tips to get through organizing through the holidays, like homeschool organization through the holidays. What would you say? I know. Here's the numbers. <laughs> well, at first, I was like, tips on new homeschoolers. I'm like, homeschool basics. <laughs> but, <laughs> I put that book together. Yeah. So, Trish and I, I'm like, I wish I could put it like split screen between us. But yeah, Trish and I wrote homeschool basics together. Um, but as far as organizing, oh my goodness. So, staying organized for the holidays. Um, Really, it comes down to having a game plan. And so I use a crate system. Uh, but if you wanted to do something just for the holidays, so let's say you decided you want to spend December just doing fun literature and fun activities and field trips like Trisha was mentioning, I would just outline it out. Just write it out, kind of figure out what you want to do, and then just start pulling things from the internet, from the library, um, from wherever you can get your hands on things and just start putting it together. Um, but the, the most important thing for organizing through the holidays is to give yourself grace and remember that you have to kind of think big picture. Like it's more important that you're getting family time. I think that's why so many of us do homeschool and choose curriculum like sunlight so that we have that time together. And so it's making sure that we spend that time together 
and enjoy the season instead of rushing through and getting things checked off. And my uh, number one tip that I like to share, and I will impart this to everyone here listening, and that is the power of the X. If you have too much going on and you are a box checker, just know that you are allowed to put a big fat X over things that you decide <laughs> you're just not going to get to. And that way the empty box isn't staring at you and it's okay. Put an X over it and skip it and just move on. So that's, that's my crazy advice. <laughs> that's awesome advice. I feel like I need to do that more in my life. Um, really good for me well, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how about you, Tessa? What was that? How about you with the two tips for organization? Yeah, and I think for us, when we, like, because we have so many people in this house, it's figuring yeah. out what do we want to focus on. So mm -hmm. I think so many times we have so much stuff coming in. I mean, right now I've already started buying for Christmas. So I have piles of stuff that I need to wrap. And then kids will wow. get all the cookie stuff out. And it's, I mean, to decorate cookies and this and that. And so figuring out what are the things that we want to do and then organize around that. So we will organize, like this is our cookie baking day. So that day we will get out, we'll get all of the baking stuff, we'll get all the cookie making stuff and we'll just, and I'll know when we go in, this is gonna be a mess. There's gonna be flour yeah. everywhere and just make that the day that we do that. We'll have another mm -hmm. day where everyone's gift wrapping presents for each other. And so I think when it comes to like, everyone knows where the things are for that day um, instead of just mm -hmm. getting stuff out all year long. Cause I think that's the hard thing when you have wrapping paper here and cookie cutters here and you just feel like the house is just exploded all around you. Yeah. Um, we'll also always decorate the day after Thanksgiving. So we're not out there shopping, getting all the deals, but we pull out again, all the stuff. We do that one day, get it all up and then put everything back away. So it just feels like not, we're not spending weeks dragging stuff up and trying to get it out. Cause I think that, is what's really stressful stressful when you it's have exhausting all yeah all the stuff around all the time and nothing's ever completed so it's like okay these things are done like we got these things done these are our main things we want to do and then everything's organized and put back away and we could get it out later or next year and we'll come back around to it very good the other thing is we often say they're still learning. So if you're making cookies, you are learning at that point. They're yeah. learning about measurements. They're learning about how to even serve those. I mean, there's also that gratitude aspect where you could make mm -hmm. extra cookies and take them to the, you know, the older person that lives next door. And there's a little bit of that as well. So Absolutely. they're still learning through the holidays. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Wow. And what Christy was saying earlier two actually was kind of the tips about that I talk about, about no grumbles in the holidays. It's just Xing out stuff like we don't need to do that this year. And that can be mm -hmm. whether we don't need, we're not going to read this book out loud this year. We'll save it for summer or we're not going to do whatever event that we had always planned to do this year. We're going to save it for another time. And I think so many times we try to do everything and then yeah. we're exhausted and we're tired and there's Christmas parties. Like our basketball teams are having, and they call it a, a friends, Friendsgiving or something. It's like a friends Thanksgiving thing next week. When I'm looking at my schedule, we have my daughter in town. We have all this other stuff happening. Yeah. Like, that would be really fun. My kids love their basketball team, but we're just going to say no to that this year. Because we'd right. be running and we'd be grumbling and everyone's tired. And I think just having that free space where we can sit down and play a board game. And that's part of school too. You know, we're, we're learning rules and we're yeah. learning how to do all these things yeah. when we're playing board games. That is just as good as running and trying to catch all these activities because then everyone is complaining, grumbling, and tired, which is no fun. And that's where you get every invitation to everything over the holidays. Um, and usually it's just like, you know, I would love to do that. We're just not going to be able to this year. And people understand, like, no one's going to get angry at me because we don't show up to their, you know, Christmas party. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I, I love that. But you're, I love all that because. One of the things I've learned that even with Christmas traditions, you have to do that with all of the to do's that come at you around the holidays. Mm -hmm. Even with Christmas traditions, it's like we've had years where I'm like, I'm sorry, we cannot get to the normal baking this year. So we did baking at Valentine's Day instead. And yeah. so you can take traditions you love and push them out throughout the year. And so we actually have a, like a little traditions planner, which I mean, I've got a nice, pretty printable version of it, but you can literally take a piece of paper and you write January and write out your traditions, February and write out your traditions. Then you'll get to December and you'll be like, here are the traditions. It has its own page. 
but I've just started moving things around. So we don't typically do gingerbread houses at Christmas time. We do them at during, we've, we've done the candy heart ones. We did a Halloween one. And I really want to try like a leprechaun one. That'd be really fun. Cause we're clovers. But yes, you need it. I know. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Well, you need to share a picture if you do that. I know. If we, if we get to it, depends on what March looks like. <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to say. <laughs> okay. So let's talk a little bit about literature base as Sunlighters. That is one of the, you know, awesomest things that we get to do. Also, it provides us a little bit of flexibility. So let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about literature based homeschooling through the holidays and how that really does help you in general. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, either okay, way. <laughs> sorry, I forgot to direct the question. Trisha, I know, I'm like, we already talked about it a little bit, which is <laughs> not on tape, but in Audible for you maybe, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, getting um, books on Audible. Every time I say videotape or audio tape, my like, they're not tapes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, when we're- We'll translate. <laughs> yeah, or even when, you're, when you are like baking cookies, you could totally put mm -hmm. on one of your read out loud school books and put it on mm -hmm. audible and have it plain. And I, I, we did that a couple years ago. One of our books, sunlight books was, um, oh, the Christmas best Christmas pageant ever, yeah. which is a super fun co comedy kids book. And so we're, you know, decorating and doing crafts and listening to that. It's a totally fun school Aww. day. And that's one of the cool things about literature based, um, three, my three newest kids have dyslexia. My, my youngest seven are adopted, but my three youngest have dyslexia and read out loud is awesome for them because they get stories that either for me reading or an audible or you know audiobook reading that they cannot read themselves. They are just not at that level yet. And so they're getting these rich, rich stories um, while they're, they're not able to read them. So while we're doing stuff. And so even when I'm reading out loud, if it's not, not a holiday, they are doing crafts. They're playing with Legos. They're keeping their hands busy, which helps them to focus, but they're also getting the wonderful stories. And I think that's really important. And my oldest daughter that is here, she's um, 27. She started teaching at a university and she grew up, you know, we did sunlight books. She was at the library all the time. Like those books poured into her. Now she teaches literature in uh, the Czech Republic. And so it's so neat to see that what we put into them as kids, mm. the love for books, the love for reading, the love for story, I could see it as an adult, like her pouring into international students, like halfway across the world. It's so amazing to see that. that, that and also, you know, just the togetherness of a story, whether you're in the car sharing the story together, when you're reading out loud, sharing a story together. Sometimes I'll have some of my older girls do some of the younger kids read out loud. And it's just that bonding time and that connection that they have as a family that we don't get if every child has their own curriculum and they're split up and doing their own thing right. through the house it really does bring that togetherness and what i love now that i i do have four kids that are graduated from homeschool um three are adults and doing their thing when we come around family dinners they'll say oh remember that book that we read and do you don't you remember that story and it's so neat to have those memories built around books mm, i love it i love it how about you christy Oh, you're not to repeat the question. I was just engaged in what Trisha was saying. I'm like, I don't know. That sounds good. <laughs> so what was was about, oh, <laughs> funny. Well, I have to say before this, uh, before we went live, um, I tried to get Trisha to invite her daughter who also yeah. had a baby. I'm like, bring her. I want to talk to a second generation son later. Have her pop in. But the baby yeah. Is tired and you know we all. I might try to go see and if I could hold the baby, she could slip in here. Oh, Ooh. answering this question, I'll go see if she wants to slip in. Here. Okay, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Christy was showing us around her son's room. Yes, this is my son's room. We have we have construction happening. <laughs> so, but under my son's room, everywhere is what we were saying. Like, it's like okay, don't and everyone here you can't tell my son I just did this, but. <laughs> I Even he it. makes his bed every day. Look, I mean, his, his little pillow says, um, I like to party and by party, I mean, read books. But um, Grant has, he has written two books now and he's an avid reader. I cannot keep the kid away from books. I mean, he's the one that everybody goes to, even adults to ask like, what's a great book to read? And so he's, he's amazing. And he's got a whole bookshelf right in here in front of me that's just filled with library books. 
Um, so he loves it. He's just very passionate about it. So maybe someday yeah. he'll write a book that will be part of the sunlight curriculum. Oh, I love it. Cool. She's going to try to pop in. She's feeding the baby right now. Okay. So we'll see. Perfect. It's I'm like like nursing on uh, the is face there, of the yeah, Is there nighttime there? And so <laughs> getting their schedule. Uh, it's oh, it's so hard. Yeah. So, okay, Christy, literature yes, homeschooling during the holiday. How do you, how does it, how, how does it help you in general? Oh, in general. Well, okay. So I'm going to, I wish my son Grant, I'm not my son, my son Wade. So Wade is brand new to sunlight. Um, and he was so funny because we were unboxing the books. He's just like, what I, you mean like I get to read like just books. Like <laughs> no, where's this? And I'm like, yeah, we're reading books. And, we're reading and he keeps coming in. He's like, mom, I am loving this. He's like, I am learning more than I ever learned before. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's like, so excited he's like i get to read to learn and stories and i'm like i know you can read through stories and i'm thinking like but we read the missionary books and read all these other things he's like no but like we do those books and then we do these other books so he's been loving it so what i'm loving is just the holidays like we can plop down on a couch and read i mean and that's been so fun in general is just i mean for for us and i'm sure you guys probably agree like homeschooling is a way of life and so like education is just wrapped up into everything we do so even in the summertime it's not like okay we're done with school now like we are always reading something or learning something so it doesn't have to be a box that we're checking so um as i mentioned earlier like i we do have our traditional books that we try to pull out of the holidays so we're reading those as a family and you know starting to do different traditions that we have um, one of which, by the way, I don't do it every year. In fact, it's been a few years since I've done it. But um, we had part of our advent was that I would wrap a book. Um, and so the kids didn't know which Christmas book we were going to be opening and going through. And so that's one of our traditions is that, you know, so every day instead of like hanging a little ornament, we would be getting to open a new book and they wouldn't know which one we were going to read that day. Um, so we've pulled different ways of kind of getting literature to be a part of our life, but also our holiday. Yeah. And I, I know one other thing I want to add to is sometimes it seems like we're behind, like maybe through the holidays, we'll feel like we're not keeping up with the week. And I That's will never okay. get through like all 36 weeks. It just doesn't happen. But I know I will have some of those books for summer reading. So during this yeah. summer, my kids have to read for 20 minutes a day, which usually ends up being more, but that's kind of like standard 20 minutes a day before they get to go outside or do other things. And so those are the books that we maybe didn't finish during the year that they'll pull out and we'll read those during the summertime too. So I think it's so neat to realize, especially if you're a new homeschooler, like all these ideas are suggestions and you can pull and use some. And there's some things that it, you may not be able to get through all the books, but use them for summer reading, use them. When you go on that mm. beach vacation, you can read out loud at the beach. I mean, all those types of things are okay. Like, don't feel like, oh my goodness, I need to do every single, single thing the curriculum says. And I need to, every week, and we're not done until it's done. It's like, no, be flexible, know your family. Mm -hmm. Like, you have hard things happening. We had a couple years ago, my grandma on Thanksgiving Day broke her back. I forgot about that. Yes. So, yeah. And so, and then we didn't figure out for a couple of weeks to go to the doctor. They finally figured out. She was in the hospital for a while. She came home before Christmas. So kind of our homeschooling was we're taking care of grandma, but that is life. Like that is homeschooling. Yeah. We are caring for her. We, you know, they see visiting grandma and we're going to the hospital and we're watching old movies with her. Like that is part of life. So just know that sometimes those challenges happen, but your their kids are still learning and you're still growing and those books are there and we did them in the summer and it ends up being okay. So don't mm. feel like, I'm behind or I can't do this or I can't keep, keep up or this is just too much. Know that life happens for everybody. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can't be a slave to your curriculum either. I mean, absolutely. We always say that um, while sunlight is fully planned, it is flexible enough for every family. So yeah. it is yeah. really just a guideline. If you want to follow it to a T and check it off, if you want to put a big, you know, giant X through something that, yeah, exactly. That you <laughs> want, so yeah, totally. Yeah, but for my older teens, um, you know, because we have two 16-year-olds and a 15-year-old, they, like, I photocopied their own schedule, and they like going through and marking off and knowing they're getting everything done, and sometimes they'll go ahead. Like, they know what books they're going to read next, and because they have their own independent reading from the Sunlight books, 
And I love that. I love that they can kind of see, okay, this is what I have to do. And I'll, and they'll say, you know, Hey, I want to do this this day. Can, you know, I said, as long as you get your stuff done. And so they can go ahead and work on those things and know that they are control. Cause when they're in college, they need to figure out how to do that themselves. Like mom's like, yeah. I'm like, here's your pile, do this today. And they need to figure out like, okay, if I want to take this day off to go hiking with a friend, then I'm going to have to do this ahead of time. And, and that's okay. And that's what I love when they do get older, they have their own independent stuff and they can do a lot of that reading on their own. And sometimes they sit down with a book that's supposed to take them a week to read and they read it in one day because yeah. they love the book. So that's good too. That's awesome. Yeah, that really is awesome. So mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier homeschooling or the holiday season, Christmas season is often just stressful, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you teach godly characters during the season? For example, we talked a little bit about bringing cookies to the elderly neighbor, um, fostering gratitude and faith instead of anxiety and greed with your children. Christy. I think service is really important. So we're always trying to find different service projects. And so um, one year it was kind of cute because even the, we had some little people, but we um, typed up the candy cane story and you know, which has you know the little gospel message on it. And all the kids and some friends like got together and tied the story on candy canes and we gave them out at the mall. And it's funny because it felt a little more awkward as an adult. But when you have a little kid walk up to you and hand you a candy cane, you're gonna take <laughs> people it. People are happy. Yeah. Um, so it's really, I think, interesting. There's so many ways to tie in um, faith. I mean, like that's that's why we celebrate Christmas. It is, you know, more Christ. So like, Christ, you know, Christ Moss. Moss is more. So. Um, we need to we need to be focused on him and it can be so easy to get wrapped into, you know, the busyness of the holiday. And so we tend to really step back as much as possible. And so, we'll, I mean, service projects are great. Family devotions. We have special devotions that we pull out just for Christmas. Uh, we love doing a Jesse tree. Um, so we usually have our dress Jesse tree. Some years are better than others <laughs> and getting through all of them. But that's just taking us through scripture um, from, you know, creation all the way until Christ. And one of the um, little things that we add to our Jesse tree is that um, on Christmas morning, obviously, we read, read about Christ and the Christmas story. But then the day after, um, we have our little family photo that we set next to our little Jesse tree. And that's to remember to help the kids realize that it's like. Christ's story doesn't end on Christmas Day. You know, obviously we go and it doesn't end on Easter either because he ha he is alive and he is working in us and we are part of his story. And so we try to make sure that the kids are remembering that and just showing kindness to, you know, to others and his love for others. That's awesome. There we go. And yeah. then Trisha, like, you're over. Yeah. Where are you? You're over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> long way. <laughs> well for us we have definitely some traditions and we know like this yeah. is what we do every year so our church does a thanksgiving community dinner and it's from 11 to 1 on thanksgiving day and we've done it this will be our 10th year our 10th year wow. that we've done it since we lived here in little rock and so it's open to the community um and so there's homeless people there's a lot mm. of low-income families and it's free our so we have um, our church members cook all the food up. We have that. But our family, we've taken on for 10 years. Um, we do the kids carnival. So we'll do like a cakewalk with music. And then we have like a fishing game. Um, our Some of our daughters do face painting. Um, well, and, and it's not just kids. Like sometimes a homeless woman will come up and want a little kitty on her. But, you know, it's just, it's just with people that, you know, you maybe not interact with on a daily basis. Although we go to an inner city church. So. They're, they're more used to that, but it's so neat because that's our tradition. So I will cook the couple of days before Thanksgiving. Like I'll have all the mashed potatoes, all the green meat casserole, like everything will be done and then the refrigerator. So by the time we get done at church at one, then I just start reheating all the stuff that I've already cooked up. And that just is our tradition. Our family loves it. They're making a new mm. game. We're getting, um, uh, John's building a stand with a toilet seat and he's getting poop emo emojis. I have to try to. This is my family. So oh, have to try to throw it in there. There's going to be like a a thing that lowers and raises the toilet. Yeah. So this is this is our. Family. I love John. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the I think he was taking apart a computer when I was there last time. <laughs> the prizes they get are Hershey kisses if they get the poop emoji inside. Oh, that. Awesome. Full circle. So this oh, is our wow. Thanksgiving. As we are out there, we're connecting with people. We're serving, and then also. 
Um, we also support our, I do a teen mom support group. And so they have, we have a big Christmas party. So our kids there, they'll, they'll do crafts with the kids. Oh. And, they sit and all these things. It's just like finding a way. Cause I think so many times our kids get focused on what they're mm-hmm. doing and the list right. of what they want. And especially our girls that were in foster care before, they mm. made a list and they usually got everything that on the list because people, that's when they give to foster kids. They get pick a name from the tree or the Air Force Base bias, the soldiers would buy stuff. So, you know, when they first moved in, like, they thought they could put like 10 things on a list and they get everyone. I'm like, no, like <laughs> we don't have that much money. We cannot buy you a Kindle, an iPod, or whatever, you know, on, right. on the list. And so really it has helped us to take that focus off of things they get into actually giving and serving in the community. Yeah, I will say that that's funny because, um, okay, so if you have small children in the room, take them out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stephanie's getting nervous. Um, I'll just say one of the, tra- I'm going to be, I'm going to be very PC here, but one of the traditions around Christmas, we stopped doing that tradition. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, we stopped doing that tradition because I remember one year when we were trying to do, I think it was the shoe boxes and I'm explaining to the kids that we're making sure that we, you know, create something really special for kids who don't have as much as we do. And they're like, Oh, but, um, that tradition will take care of that. And I'm like, Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, that's not how it works. I'm like, we are the tradition. So, yeah. yeah. So it's been fun because we still, we have a tweak on that. So everybody is aware of the tradition. I hope everybody's paying attention, but they're aware of it. But now, but we are. And so even my, my little kids, they have so much joy getting to play that part. I'm just, see, I kept it PC, not ruining anybody's Christmas. Good job. Good job. <laughs> And I think we have Leslie coming. Yay. Yay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Peter, how are you, Peter? Uh, you. Yeah, I was going to share some with her. See, this is this is real life it's home real life. right here. <laughs> There's mac and cheese here. Oh, uh, and the baby. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if we can get her. Leslie, right. welcome to the States. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> we got in. We got home like one last night yeah can we feed her while you talk to hi baby yes this is her first mac and cheese ever because they don't really do yeah, this, I'll hold the bone this process food. <laughs> that's right we're <laughs> gonna love it they all do <laughs> but i know right Only on sunday it's was a problem. to get this like <laughs> that's right i love it when babies are in our lives the, okay, that's the best let's do this Leslie, you are a second Sorry. generation sunlighter and I love it. And I wanted to, you to say hi to everyone and say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she thinks of the back. Live TV. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Um, well, I'm currently a missionary in the Czech Republic. I've been there now for six and a half years. And so we have our little Chamerican here. <laughs> um, when is Czech, I met him there. And so we um, are currently, and there was the mac and cheese. Here, I'll take care of the mac and cheese and you know that. Okay. <laughs> um, we're currently work- working with a small church plant and we do student outreach um, in our city. And then I was telling them about teaching at the university there too. Yeah. So and I teach, um, ling- uh, well, currently I'm on maternity leave. There you uh, get three years uh, paid maternity oh, leave. What? what? <laughs> awesome. So that's what? two years with her um wow yeah so uh, i'm currently on maternity leave but for the last Yay. couple of few years i was also teaching at the um our university in our town it's a big university city and so um i was teaching uh, english linguistics and writing which is what i studied in college yeah and she yeah she started college all this jump in it at 16 <laughs> mm-hmm. because she i like she got, went through all the curriculum like i'm done like there's nothing yeah. more i could teach you you yeah. need to move on so it was funny when i started teaching actually um because i moved to the czech republic like a week after i turned 21 i just graduated from college and then there um because i'm teaching uh, people who are studying english as their second language i was teaching both bachelor's and master's students and the master's students were like the same age as me <laughs> so it was kind of funny um, That's awesome. They're a professor, you know, at the university. <laughs> like, call me ma'am. I, know, right? <laughs> I love it. 
It's the best. Well, welcome so to the holidays, and thank you for jumping on in a spur of the moment and sharing your beautiful baby with us. <laughs> Yeah, I know Trish is really just looking for any excuse to have you and Amelia. On. I know, I know. <laughs> pretty much. And the world have experienced her first mac and cheese. Exactly. Uh, oh, right. She's fat back in my lap. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can you can slip out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Well, I think that's really all the questions we have gotten so far. Um, and I really want to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of a pitch here. Uh, we have our sunlight Christmas sale coming on the 20th. It is, you can find everything you need to know about that sale at sunlight.com slash Christmas. We are giving away 12 different things for 12 different days. So you're going to want to go back every perfect. Day. Yes. And check it out. I am so appreciative of you two joining me. Thank you so much, Trisha. Thanks so much, Christy. Um, yeah. I, it was an awesome experience, and I'm glad that we also got a second generation Sunlighter on the wall. <laughs> and maybe like, a third. Maybe you never third. know. Oh, no, right? You never know. Never a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. You. It was so much fun. Thanks for having us. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.